This is Just Tool Basics, and today we're talking about spring center punches. Hello everyone, welcome to Just Tool Basics. Today's topic is spring center punches, sometimes called an automatic center punch, spring-loaded center punch, often just called a center punch. But what this tool does is using an internal mechanism exert pressure to make a divot in a material so that you can drill into it you can mark it whatever your purpose is but it it doesn't require an external hammer to to smack the back of it like with a, a traditional punch so i can give a quick demo here so this is a little chunk of aluminum and let's say I presume you measured it out or whatever and you weren't you're just punching randomly which is what we're doing uh you can put your center punch aligned to your measurements or whatever, and then you just push down like that, and it leaves a divot. I'll do this sideways so you can see the action. Like that. And you can do it multiple times. It doesn't hurt anything. It just makes the divot deeper. And you also notice that it causes a little ridge as it deforms the material. And that happens in metal, that happens in MDF especially, and some woods as well. It will cause this like crater effect where it causes this lip to come up. So you wanna be careful of that and if that's problematic in, in your material or your goals, just be aware that this can cause that problem. Something else that you can do with the multiple punches, let's say that you thought you were lined up and you're just a little bit off, you can actually do it at an angle and walk your punch over. And then you probably want to do it again to get it deeper in that new spot. That is especially useful when you're going to drill it out anyway, right? Like you're making a little bit of a mess in that area, but if you're going to drill out with a drill bit, the rest of the surrounding mess you've made, who cares? It doesn't hurt anything. You may have seen a variant of this tool they're commonly available for like rescue teams uh, firefighters emts things like that they use a very similar device to break windows same kind of thing you don't need an external tool you don't need to take a wild swing you just push this against the glass and pink the glass explodes this design has also been adapted to things like letter or number punches to mark metal so the the tip is replaced instead of just a pointy thing replaced with either a holder to have interchangeable letters and numbers or a dedicated thing like if you're uh, marking part a part b something like that you just can punch it with one of these things that way you don't have to have big tools to make that happen and finally you can either buy or i you could modify cut this thing flat and use it as a device to tap in pins on small devices or electronics or, or things like that, since hitting them with a hammer is often not feasible because of the size. But let's get into exactly how does this kind of magical machine work. So we'll just strip it apart. You'll notice that this one has reverse threads for some reason. I don't know. This thing is a guide cap. It has a little ramped mouth there to make sure that this thing is able to be dropped in and aligned pretty easily. This thing is the punch. It's a hardened piece of steel. It has a rounded end, end there that you can see. Tip is ground to uh, have a fairly fine point. It's not super sharp, but good enough for this purpose. This thing is called the intermediate rod and intermediate spring. Now I could rip these apart, but not a good idea. The, the spring is captured on here and I don't want to deform it any more than is necessary. You'll see here though that it sits at an angle and that's important. So it wants to sit at that angle. It is very intentional. This is called the body. The important thing here is you can see that hole there that has a tapered 
flange around it. Yeah, can't really see in there very well in this lighting, but here though, that aligns to this and this taper here aligning to this oversized hole is important. So that hole is the size of the fatter part of this body, right? But the slender part can fit through that hole off to one side. Now this part is the hammer. And this little guy is, uh, in addition to the pressure from your hand, this guy is what is effectively knocking that tip in. And I'll explain in a second. This is the hammer spring. It goes behind the hammer, and then this is the end cap that keeps all that compressed. So what's happening here, this offset, right, is going through that hole and it's misaligning with this hammer, okay? But then as it pushes back through the, that, that hole in, in, the, in the body, it's forced into closer and closer alignment with this hole in the hammer, hammer mass sometimes called, until it falls in. When it falls in, like that, that fall in is the hammer punch motion that does the divoting of the material. So put this back together real quick. Now that you're imagining what it works like or how it works in there. So that snap of that intermediate body into the bore of the hammer causes that shove forward. So the name of that design, if you're interested, is called the Sweet Patent. Uh, Mr. Sweet figured it out in 1942, and it's been basically the same mechanism ever since. There's been a few variants since then, but this is pretty much a Sweet Patent style automatic center punch. And while this one is brass, you may see them made out of all sorts of other things. I've seen aluminum ones, some steel ones. The parts that need to be hard, hardened steel, are all of the guts. The body and caps don't necessarily need to be super sturdy material. And I think this brass one works great. I, I have another one that is made of steel. Also works great, though I think the knurling of the, the brass one is a little bit better for me, but just because it's it is both a little bit deeper and less sharp, so it's just a comfortable tool to use. So that's spring center punches. Until next time, this is Just Tool Basics.